editor for Esquire magazine, Thomas Barnett, looks at the challenges and opportunities facing the United States in Great Powers, America and the World After Bush. Nonfiction books and authors all weekend on Book TV. For the entire schedule, go online to booktv.org. The acting director of the Census Bureau today said the government anticipates spending more than $14 billion on the 2010 census. Those comments came during this oversight subcommittee hearing. The chairman is William Lacey Clay of Missouri. It's about an hour and a half. The uh, information policy census and national archive subcommittee of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee will come to order. Uh, good morning and welcome to today's hearing. We will receive a progress report from the Bureau on its preparations for the 2010 Census. Uh, we will also examine recommendations made by GAO for improvements needed to address the Bureau's operational challenges <clears throat> and discuss GAO's most recent report on the Bureau's overall readiness for conducting the decennial census. Uh, and, um, without objection, the chair and ranking minority member will have five minutes to make opening statements, uh, followed by opening statements not to exceed three minutes by any other member who seeks recognition. Uh, we will also recognize um, uh, each side after the opening statements for 10 minutes each. Uh, in agreement uh, with the uh, um, with both sides, and without objection, members and witnesses may have five legislative days to submit a written statement or extraneous materials for the record. Uh, I will open with with my statement and recognize uh, our esteemed uh, a colleague, Mr. McHenry, uh, for his opening statement. Uh, we are at a critical stage of preparation for next year's decennial census. This will be the Bureau's largest and most expensive census operation, costing taxpayers over $14 billion. The Bureau must use all of these resources to ensure an accurate, fair, and complete count on April 1, 2010. Uh, as Chairman, my mission is to help the Bureau to conduct the most accurate census in U.S. history. Uh, last time in 2000, the census uh, missed 3 million Americans and 1.4 million homes. Uh, most of those were missed, that, that were missed were poor, uh, many were minorities, and the majority were from urban areas. And that's just not good enough. Uh, my standard is very simple. Everyone counts, and every person must be counted. The undercount is extremely damaging to states and local communities. It deprives them of proper political representation, federal formula dollars, and vital information. For every person the Bureau misses, their local community will lose thousands of dollars of federal funding for 10 years, and given the economic emergency we all face, no city or state can afford to miss anyone. The Bureau has less than one month to complete preparations for address canvassing. This essential operation will ensure the accuracy of its master address list uh, automation, and it will play a critical role in the success of the 2010 Census. Uh, for the first time, addresses will be collected and verified using handheld computers. Today we will focus on the Bureau's progress towards strengthening uh, its integrated IT systems and how they can reduce any risk that would jeopardize an accurate enumeration. I want to thank all of our witnesses for appearing here today and I look forward to their testimony. We will also be joined today by our chairman of the Oversight Committee, uh, Mr. Towns of New York, and the ranking member of the full committee, Mr. Issa of California. Thank you all both uh, for joining us. And we will now, I will now yield to the distinguished ranking minority member, 
Mr. McHenry of North Carolina, uh, and and uh, for five minute opening statement. Thank well, you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I want to congratulate you uh, on attaining the chairmanship. Um, it's uh, certainly historic for Congress and historic for your family uh, because your father had the same jurisdiction uh, when, during his chairmanship. Um, and I know that he's certainly, certainly uh, proud uh, of, of the legacy. Um, Stop making me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, it is a historic moment, and I, and I certainly appreciate it. And I, I, I want to work in a bipartisan way with you to ensure all the things that you said in your opening statement, I concur. Um, and I, I do have this hope that we can work in a bipartisan uh, basis uh, to ensure that all Americans are counted. I have the same concerns as Chairman Clay about the undercount. Um, I am looking forward to hearing the Bureau explain their procedures for the undercount and the overcount. Um, but uh, back in 2008, the full Oversight and Government Reform Committee met to discuss the challenges and funding problems facing the Census Bureau and, and identify ways to facilitate a full and accurate count in 2010. Today, almost a year later, we have the opportunity to ask the Bureau exactly what, uh, where they are in the preparations uh, for the decennial census, where it should be and how, with Congress's help, it can get there. Uh, the decennial census is a huge undertaking, the largest peacetime mobilization this country has ever seen. The data that are collected affect how government and businesses allocate the resources from the state level all the way down to the small towns and communities in my district and Chairman Clay's district and all across America. Um, therefore, it's important that the Bureau be an open and, and be as open and honest as possible uh, about their preparation for a full count in 2010 and any associated problems that they might incur. Um, and I think I, I speak for both myself and the Chairman when I say the subcommittee will not point fingers if problems exist, they always will uh, with such a massive undertaking. Uh, and we'll certainly work with you to change existing plans. Um, and we'll work with you early and often to make that happen. This includes letting us know about any funding needs that may come up along the way. Your bu the Bureau re recently received a billion dollars in the stimulus and another $2.7 billion is currently in the 2010-2009 uh, omnibus uh, before the Senate today. Uh, as well as appropriations for 2010. Uh, Congress has demonstrated its intent to ensure the Census Bureau has every resource it needs to conduct a full and accurate count. Uh, with a sufficiently funded Census Bureau, we can ensure a fair and thorough 2010 census that counts everyone and leaves no justification for using any accounting methods. Finally, I would like to stress the importance of protecting the integrity of the Census without manipulation from either party. I know that is rare to hear in Congress. Uh, yesterday in a meeting, uh, as, as was reported today, uh, yesterday in a meeting with the Senate Commerce Committee leaders, Commerce Secretary-designee Gary Locke expressed his desire for a Census Bureau free of political pressure from the White House. And I am encouraged by his comments and hope that President Obama accepts the Governor's wishes and, uh, and restores control of the Census Bureau to the Department of Commerce. Following that, the next Census Director, uh, who the President has yet to uh, appoint and name, uh, must also state his opinion on a nonpartisan and accurate census. Based on news reports, Governor Locke did express his intention to employ statistical sampling as a, quote, accuracy check. I am certain that during the, uh, the Governor's confirmation hearings, he will clarify what exactly that means. Um, and what it must not mean is that sampling will be used in any way to manipulate the census data for partisan gain. Chairman Clay and I share this goal to ensuring that every American, every individual in this country, regardless of uh, any race or socioeconomic status or any locational issues or challenges or any other characteristic, is not counted. We want to make sure every American is counted. All ideas brought before the subcommittee to help us achieve this goal will be given thorough consideration, and I'm confident that together we can formulate a plan to ensure a full, a full and accurate count in 2010. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McHenry. I look forward to our endeavors together. Thank you. And now I recognize the Chairman of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee, uh, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Towns, and welcome to the subcommittee. Thank you very much. And let me uh, thank you and, of course, the Ranking Member, Mr. McHenry, and, of course, the Ranking Member of the full committee, uh, Congressman Issa, 
Uh, this is a very, very important subject. And of course, the census is a top priority for the committee. And I will be following it very, very closely and will be willing to work with you to make certain that we are getting a fair and accurate count. There is no question that the census is a sensitive issue from a political point of view because it has a direct impact on how seats are apportioned among the states for this body and the House of Representatives. But my goal is for the committee to carry out its oversight work in a responsible, nonpartisan manner. I hope we can keep our focus on the management practices and making certain that they have enough staff to do the job that needs to be done and let's not get caught up in the political stuff that really does not help us you know, to be able to come up with an accurate recount. Uh, of course, I look forward to working with uh, you, Chairman Clay, Mr. Mike Henry, and of course um, the members of the committee as well as the ranking member in the full committee uh, to make certain that this time we get it right. Uh, and I do believe that we can get it right, but it's going to require all of us focusing on accurate counting rather than the politics of the situation. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back on that note. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And um, I, no I now recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa. Thank you, Chairman Clay. Since 1790, America has endeavored to count accurately all the persons in the United States. It's certainly today not as automated as we'd like in this coming census, but we have tools we didn't have in 1790. We don't have to go up river and check and see uh, who heard that there was a trapper somewhere beyond the last station that anyone knew existed. So in many ways, we will have a more accurate count than we did at our founding. It is a given, though, that we will not have a perfect count. But since estimates begin after the account, it is critical that we have an actual count from which so many estimates are made of other materials. That is the goal of uh, this committee. I can see that it is the goal of this committee on a bipartisan basis. And when the chairman and the chairman of the full committee as well talked about the importance of an accurate count and of the census in general, I think he, he did so for a reason that many people today at this hearing may not yet understand, and that is that we have the shortest constitution in the world, and yet it includes the requirement to count every 10 years every person in the United States. Not every citizen, not every voter, every person. And for that reason, it is something that has been nonpartisan since our founding, and I am sure will remain so. But today I look forward to hearing from our witnesses how we may strive to be more efficient, if possible, but more effective than ever before in that endeavor. Because I am sure that the man or woman up the river in 1790 didn't get counted for reasons of difficulty in getting to that count. And I am sure there will be people like that uh, in this decade, but I would like to hear how we can reduce to the absolute minimum the any undercount or error in counting. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you and yield back. I thank the gentleman from California and I appreciate your comments uh, and, and your historic perspective on the, on the census. <laughs> and, uh, and I now would like to recognize our uh, colleague from Ohio, the gentleman, Mr. Driehaus, recognized for opening statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you very much for, for calling this hearing this morning. Uh, as has already been stated uh, by the members, uh, it is critically important that we get the count right uh, when it comes to the Census. And I happen to represent, Mr. Chairman, the, the City of Cincinnati in, in my Congressional District. And the City of Cincinnati led the charge in challenging uh, the count in the last Census because we had so many people, especially in, in low income and minority communities in Cincinnati, um, that were not counted. And obviously this is a, an issue that is near and dear to uh, our Mayor, Mark Mallory, who has uh, led the charge on behalf of the mayors uh, of cities across the country uh, to make sure that we are, in fact, uh, ensuring an accurate count uh, of all people, as has been mentioned by Mr. Issa. So I, I fully support uh, the efforts of the committee, and, and I would like to invite you, Mr. Chairman, and the committee, if you are considering field hearings uh, on the topic, 
uh, to come on out to Southwest Ohio and Cincinnati. Uh, I'm sure our mayor would greet us with open arms, uh, and, and we certainly want to make sure in Cincinnati uh, that we have a fair count. So I thank you, and I look forward to the testimony today. Thank the gentleman for the invitation, and uh, your, your mayor is a wonderful leader of that community, and uh, we look forward to the visit. I want to recognize the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Chaffetz. Uh, thank Pardon. you. I, I just uh, simply want to echo the, the sentiments uh, of the chairman and of the ranking member, the idea and the notion that we have a fair and accurate count. I also just also want to express, and I hope it can be carried back, to the men and women who will serve, be the foot soldiers, if you will, who will be out there uh, participating in this census. I, I hope they understand the important duty that they take on, but also the thanks from their government. It's going to be tough, difficult work over a long period of time. But there is a great deal of appreciation to the men and women who will serve and spend their time, effort, and talents in order to execute this census in a fair and, and uh, uh, fair manner. Uh, just please know that this committee, this body of the United States Congress, appreciates their service and uh, to all those who are serving this country for this very important endeavor. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. I thank the gentleman from U Utah for his opening <coughs> statement, and I know that they have a stake in this uh, upcoming <laughs> census. I'm just glad to be counted on this panel, Mr. <laughs> Chair. <Chesso. laughs> uh -huh. I recognize the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Maloney. Thank, thank you thank, for Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Clay, for calling this hearing, and, and thank you also to uh, Chairman Towns for uh, attending, as well as Ranking Members Issa and McHenry. Thank you so much for being here on this important issue. Well, it must be the year before the decennial since the census is so much in the news. As Yogi Berra used to say, it's deja vu all over again. This is just like it was in 1999. We have pre press conferences, press releases, charges, countercharges, accusations, so the census must be next year. Today we have a hearing to see how the census is doing and getting ready for 2010. But this hearing is where the similarities to 2000 end. The controversies of the 2000 census were over the attempts by the scientists at the Census Bureau uh, to use methods to improve a more accurate uh, count. Uh, these were ideological differences over how to accomplish that goal. Today, we have a census that has real operational problems, a census that is facing many last-minute oper operational changes uh, that have not gone through field testing to the extent that operational issues were field tested in 2000. We are not anywhere near the level of attention and testing that took place in 2000. Uh, let's just look at one area, the fingerprinting operation. This was added just last summer by the Bush administration. Hundreds of thousands of applicants that census will want to hire will have to be fingerprinted. The images run through the Justice Department's computers and then the results return to the field offices uh, next year. None of this operation has been field tested anywhere close to the type of testing that was done prior to 2000 for similar operations. What if it fails or slows the hiring process? This would really hurt uh, the operations of the census. Or let us look at the proposed second mailing of census forms. Here you have an operation that was looked at in 2000 and rejected in 2000 that has been added to 2010 without a clear explanation as to how the problems that led to its rejection in 2000 would be dealt with. Or how the management systems that handle payroll and the enumerators work since we've had or to revert to a paper census after going to a handheld seemed unworkable after spending millions of dollars. None of them have been given testing anywhere close to what was done in 2000. Hopefully we will hear good news today, but I suspect that we will not hear enough that will convince us that there is not real operational problems in the Census Bureau. Mr. Chairman, as we look at the 2010 Census in the coming months, I hope that you and the committee will also take the time to start looking at 2020, something I know that the General Accounting Office is already doing, 
as to how we can avoid this type of situation in the future. As you know, I, along with Chairman Dent and Charlie Gonzalez and many others, have put forward bipartisan legislation to make the Census Bureau an independent agency, to allow it to work over the next 10-year cycle of the Census without interference without changing guidelines, without having its budget diminished and changed and moved around. I hope that the committee will be able to look at that in the coming months as we deal with the problems we will be facing in 2010. Thank you very much, and I thank all the panelists for being here and all my colleagues. I thank the gentlewoman for her opening statement and realize that the uh, census is a work in progress and that we have to continue to uh, attempt to perfect it. So I thank you. I look forward to working with you. Uh, if there are no additional opening statements, the subcommittee will now receive testimony from the witnesses before us today. Uh, and I want to start by introducing our panel. Uh, we have with us Mr. Uh, Thomas Messenborg, uh, the acting director of the U.S. Census Bureau. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Robert Goldenkopf, Director of Strategic Issues at the GAO. Thank you for being here. Uh, Mr. Goldenkopf's uh, responsibilities include uh, directing work on the 2010 Census. He's accompanied by uh, uh, Mr. David Pounder, Director of Information Technology Management Issues. Uh, good to see you again, Mr. Pounder. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, Mr. Glenn Himes, who is the Executive Director of the Center for Enterprise Modernization at the MITRE Corporation. I want to welcome all of you all to, to our hearing today. And it is the policy of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee to swear in all witnesses before they testify. Uh, would all of you please stand and raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Let the record reflect that all of the witnesses answered in the affirmative. Uh, each of you will have five minutes to make an opening statement. Your complete written testimony will be included in the hearing record. The yellow light will indicate it is time to sum up. The red light will uh, indicate your time has expired. Uh, Mr. Messenberg, you may proceed with your opening statement. Uh, Chairman Clay, Chairman Towns, Ranking Member McHenry and Issa, and members of the subcommittee, I appreciate the opportunity to report on the Census Bureau's preparations for the 2010 Census. The Census is upon us. April 1, 2010 is only 392 days from today. I can report we are well on our way towards a successful enumeration. A complete and accurate address list is the cornerstone of a successful Census. Throughout the decade, we regularly updated the address list we used in Census 2000. In 2007, we invited tribal, state, and local governments to review our address list for accuracy and completeness as part of the Local Update of Census Address Programs, or LUCA. 11,500 government entities registered for LUCA, and over 8,100 provided updates that accounted for an additional 8 million addresses that we have added to our address list. Address canvassing, the first major operation in the 2010 Census, starts on March 30th and runs through July 17, 2009. During address canvassing, 140,000 Census Bureau employees will walk almost every street in America checking and updating 145 million addresses. Then in late September, we will validate the listings for group quarters, which include dormitories, group homes, prisons, and the like. This is the first time that group quarters are part of address canvassing, and their inclusion will improve the accuracy and the coverage of the final count. In December 2008, we conducted the address canvassing operational field test. The test provided an opportunity for our field staff to test the key functionality of the handheld computers in an environment that approximates a real census. Headquarters staff and all of our 12 regional directors participated in the, in the test. 
the Government Accountability Office and the Commerce uh, Department's Inspector General staff observed the test. The positive results demonstrated uh, the significant improvement that we have made since dress rehearsal and reinforced our confidence in the operation's production readiness. In April 2008, the Secretary announced the decision not to use handhelds to collect data uh, during the non-response follow-up operation. Late last spring, we completed the high-level plan for enumerators to use paper forms to collect information from non-respondents, just as we have done in previous censuses. In October 2008, we rescoped the field data collection automation contract responsibilities. The Census Bureau took over responsibility for a, a, a number of operations, including the help desk and the operational control system, which is the nerve center for our 494 local census offices that will be responsible for 2010 data collection operations. We made these descoping decisions to reduce the overall risk to the Census. We have done these operations before and we are confident in our ability to do them again. At the end of January 2009, we completed the schedule for development, testing and deployment of the 2010 operational control system that will support 2010 data collection activities, including non-response follow-up. We are making good progress on system development and testing is scheduled to begin April 20, 2009. We will also continue to closely monitor the development and testing of the paper-based operations themselves. We agree with GAO for the need of a comprehensive testing program. We believe over the past 11 months we have established a very robust testing program that is responsive to the recent GAO testing recommendations. <laughs> GAO made nine recommendations outlining 28 steps that should be taken to strengthen our testing program. We have already implemented 16 of the steps they have specified and eight others will be, uh, are planned to be implemented. Of the remaining four steps, uh, two of the steps uh, take place later in the cycle and we will implement them at, at the appropriate time and an additional two steps uh, we are going to seek uh, clarification from GAO about their intent on those. We are also taking steps to address GAO's concerns related to cost estimates. We appreciate GAO's recommendations and we recently provided them with an action plan uh, and we certainly are committed to implementing those steps outlined in that plan. In closing, I believe that our current plan has significantly reduced the risk to the 2010 Census and we are prepared to meet the challenges that lie ahead. Members of the subcommittee, the Census Bureau is on track for a successful Census and I am happy to take your questions. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Massenburg. Mr. Golden Kauf, you may proceed for five minutes. Chairman Clay. Chairman Towns, Ranking Members McHenry and, and ISA, and members of the subcommittee. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today to provide a progress report on the 2010 Census. I am here with Dave Pounder, a director in GAO's Information Technology Team. As requested in our remarks today, I will provide a broad overview of the status of key census taking operations and Dave will focus on the findings and recommendations contained in our report on IT testing which we are releasing today. This morning's hearing is particularly timely. Exactly one year ago today, GAO designated the 2010 Census a high risk area for three reasons. First, there are weaknesses in the Census Bureau's IT acquisition and contract management function. Second, there were problems with the performance of handheld computers used to collect data. And third, the ultimate cost of the Census is uncertain, although it is currently estimated at more than $14 billion. At the same time, just over one year from now, it will be Census Day. Little time remains to address the challenges that have emerged thus far and make final preparations for the numerous operations that will take place throughout 2010. The poster board uh, to my right, which is a timeline of key census taking activities, shows some of the work that lies ahead and the need to stay on schedule in order to keep the census on track. 
Because of legally mandated deadlines, the Bureau can't call a timeout or press a reset button. In short, today's hearing is a convenient way station on the road to Census Day, a time to look back on the Census Bureau's efforts over the past year to address the operational challenges that have emerged thus far, as well as to look ahead to what the Bureau needs to do in the coming months to help ensure a successful headcount. Importantly, the Bureau has made commendable progress over the past year in rolling out key components of the Census and has strengthened certain risk management efforts. Still, the Census remains high risk because the dress rehearsal of all Census operations that was planned for 2008 was curtailed. As a result, critical activities, including some that will be used for the first time in a Census, were not tested in concert with one another uh, or under Census-like conditions. The bottom line is that key census taking activities, including those that will ultimately drive the final cost and account, continue to face challenges and the Bureau's overall readiness for 2010 is uncertain. One such challenge is building the Bureau's address list. Because a complete and accurate address list is a foundation of a successful census, the Bureau has a number of operations aimed at including every residence in the country and works with the U.S. Postal Service, agencies at all levels of government, as well as a number of non-governmental entities. In a few weeks, the Bureau will send thousands of workers to walk every street in the country to update the census address list and maps in an operation called address canvassing. Census workers will use handheld computers to collect data. As you know, when the devices were tested, they experienced performance problems such as freeze-ups and unreliable transmissions. The Bureau took steps to fix these issues, and the results of a small-scale test held last December are encouraging. Nonetheless, more information is needed to determine the Bureau's overall readiness for address canvassing, as a field test was not an end-to-end -end systems test, did not validate training, help desk, support, and other requirements, and did not include urban areas. Uncertainties also surround the Bureau's ability to implement operations that will be used for the first time in a decennial census, included a targeted second mailing to reduce the non-response follow-up workload and the need to fingerprint temporary census workers. The Bureau's readiness for these activities is uncertain because they have not been tested under census-like conditions. Another challenge facing the Bureau is reducing the undercount. As with past enumerations, the Bureau is putting forth tremendous effort to reach groups that are often missed by the census, such as minorities, renters, and people with limited English proficiency. For example, the Bureau plans to provide language assistance guides in 59 languages, an increase from 49 languages in 2000. The Bureau also plans to deploy a comprehensive communications campaign consisting of, among other efforts, paid advertising and the hiring of as many as 680 partnership staff who will be tasked with reaching out to local governments, community groups, and other organizations in an effort to secure a more complete count. Although the effects of the Bureau's communication efforts are difficult to measure, the Bureau reported some positive results from its 2000 census marketing efforts with respect to raising awareness of the census. Still, a long-standing challenge for the Bureau is converting that awareness of the census into an actual response. In summary, just 13 months remain until Census Day. At a time when major testing should be complete and there should be confidence in the functionality of key operations, the Bureau instead finds itself managing late design changes and developing testing plans. The Bureau has taken important steps toward mitigating some of the challenges that it has faced to date, yet much remains uncertain and the risks to a successful census continue. I will now turn it over to my colleague, Dave Pounder, who will discuss the Bureau's management. Thank you so much, Mr. Golden Call. Mr. Pounder, you're recognized for five minutes. Chairman Clay, Chairman Towns, Ranking Member McHenry, and members of the subcommittee, the accuracy of the 2010 Census depends in large part on the proper functioning of IT systems both individually and when integrated together. Mr. Chairman, your oversight of the Bureau's acquisition of IT systems was critical last year. In particular, the field data collection system is no longer spiraling out of control, and that contract is $500 million less than the initial estimates provided at your hearings last summer. Your oversight is needed once again in the technology area to ensure that between now and Census Day, these systems are rigorously tested. Today we are releasing our latest report completed at your request, which highlights that significant testing remains. Six major systems need to complete systems testing, and much integration testing needs to occur. Plans for conducting this testing are not completely in place. In order to ensure effective test execution, 
The Bureau needs comprehensive metrics to monitor test completion and effective executive level oversight to keep the pressure on and to manage risks. Our report contains 10 detailed recommendations that the Bureau has agreed to address. For example, integration testing includes the testing of the interfaces or the handshake between systems. Our work found that not only were there not complete plans or schedules for integration testing of these interfaces, but there was not even a master list or inventory of interfaces. Not having such basic information at this stage is unacceptable, and our recommendations call for the Bureau to develop a master list of interfaces, prioritize the interfaces based on criticality and need date, and to use this to develop all needed integration plans. To the Bureau's credit, we are seeing more plans and better metrics, but there is still much work ahead in both areas. I would like to stress the need to prioritize. It is likely the Bureau will not have enough time to test everything and testing the most important aspects of certain systems, interfaces and operations is critical given the limited time remaining. Mr. Chairman, again, thank you for leader your leadership and I look forward to your questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Powell, and thank you for this report uh, outlining what uh, remains ahead for the Bureau. Uh, we, we certainly will exercise that oversight to ensure that, uh, that they meet these, these standards. Uh, Mr. Dr. Himes, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, and good morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity you have given to the MITRE Corporation to update the Committee on Critical Operations for the 2010 Decennial Census. The MITRE Corporation is a not-for-profit organization chartered to work in the public interest. MITRE manages three federally funded research and development centers, or FFRDCs, one for the Department of Defense, one for the Federal Aviation Administration, and one for the Internal Revenue Service. Governed by Part 35.017 of the Federal Acquisition Regulations, FFRDCs operate in the public interest with objectivity, independence, freedom from conflict of interest, and full disclosure of their affairs to their respective government sponsors. It continues to be our privilege to serve with the talented engineers and other professionals who support the Census Bureau in its efforts to prepare and conduct the 2010 Decennial Census. We are pleased to report that since MITRE's last appearance before this committee in July, that the Bureau has demonstrated continued improvements in managing and overseeing preparations for the 2010 decennial census. These improvements include an increase in processes and tools to monitor program progress and to identify potential risks. We are also pleased to report that many significant issues with the field data collection automation contract have been resolved. Approximately a year ago, we expressed concerns about the cost, schedule, and performance risks for the FIDCA program to the Census Bureau. A risk reduction task force established by the Secretary of Commerce and the Director of the Census Bureau recommended a rebalancing of work from the contractor to the government. The goal was to enable the contractor to focus on the software and system necessary to perform the address canvassing operation. Based on our observations, it appears that the rebalancing has achieved its intended effect and the risks to the address canvassing operation are substantially reduced. Although the rebalancing was essential, much of the progress is due to positive steps by the Census Bureau's FIDCA Program Management Office and the Contractors Development Team. Both organizations should be commended for establishing an effective working relationship and overcoming the large challenges they faced in the past year. Although we are cautiously optimistic about the address canvassing operation, risks remain within it and other operations for the 2010 decennial census. These risks are natural for such large programs. Census Bureau personnel update and monitor these risks on a regular basis and constant attention will be required until the decennial is completed. We remain committed to helping the Census Bureau prepare for a successful 2010 decennial census. Thank you for inviting us to this hearing, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Hines, for your testimony. We will begin under a 10-minute rule uh, for each side, and I will start with Mr. Messenborg. Uh, Mr. Messenborg, it sounds like the Bureau has come a long way since our last meeting. 
uh, I commend you and your staff. A lot of the work was inspired um, by GAO findings. Uh, so I want to also commend Dr. Uh, Mr. Pounder uh, and Mr. Goldenkopf, uh, along uh, um, with Mr. Goldenkopf's predecessor, uh, Matthew Sari, for the uh, great work their teams have done on the 2010 Census. It was GAO that first brought to this committee's attention the problems with FITCA. Uh, they recommended consistent oversight to which this subcommittee has been committed. Uh, I also want to commend Dr. Hines for the important role MITRE has played in helping the Bureau to resolve problems. And um, let's go straight to testing. Uh, GAO made 10 recommendations to ensure that testing activities for key systems are completed. Uh, what actions is the Bureau taking or planning to address GAO's recommendations? Mr. Chairman, we've, uh, we've provided a detailed response to uh, GAO, but let me just sum up some of the major steps that we've, we've done. Uh, last April, when the decision was made to replan the census and to shift from the handheld uh, use in the non-response follow-up to a paper base, we did a thorough review at that point of our testing program. We found some, we did an inventory of the testing and we found some data gaps and then we addressed those by adding additional, uh, additional tests. We also, uh, uh, later last year, appointed a testing officer with responsibility over all testing for the decennial census. And we've made testing metrics a key part of every operational review. So we look at the census, we have about 51 key operations that we're doing, and those are things like non-response follow-up. We have 25 systems that those operations interact with, and we have 244 interfaces between systems. So uh, later, uh, late last year, we also have appointed an integration manager who has responsibility to make sure all of the activities that we took out of the FITCA contract now will fit together and will be integrated. We clearly face some challenges uh, given the descoping of the census. So we took over key, uh, about 11 key paper operations. And I think we are being responsive uh, to Mr. Pounder's comment of trying to prioritize. So. We're implementing what we would call a thread test, and those are key activities within a process. For example, our first focus is on non-response follow-up and group quarters evaluation. Testing on those activities in the operational control system will begin on April 20th. We think those two operations test a huge amount of the functionality okay. that we'll use in the other nine operations. Okay, let, me, so. let me stop you right there. Okay. Let me and, and, um, ask you, in the report, GAO stated that in May 2008, the Bureau established an inventory of all testing activities specific to all key decennial operations but that the inventory had not been updated since that time. Uh, what is the current status of testing activities for the 2010 okay. Census? At this point, we do have a comprehensive uh, inventory of all of the testing that we need to do. Uh, given the time constraints that we, under, we are under, there will be some operations that we have performed in the past that we will not test as thoroughly on, uh, as we will, some of the new activities. Where, where is the Bureau on the development of the operations control system for paper-based operations? Okay. At, uh, at the end of January, we uh, integrated uh, the schedule for the operational control system that will control 11 oper paper-based operations in the census. We integrated that into the master uh, activity schedule. Uh, so that is done, and we do have a detailed uh, plan at this point and schedule for what we're calling release zero. Release zero will 
focus on the non-response follow-up and the group quarters enumeration. Then we'll follow with a release one, which will take on additional operations such as remote Alaska. So I believe we have a detailed plan that we can move ahead and each one of those releases will have testing as part of the uh, part of the sign off. And, and at what date certain can we expect you to report to this subcommittee that adequate plans for total end to end testing are in place? There probably will, to be honest, there will not be end to end testing of all operations because what we'll have to do is we'll test that key functionality which will show up in uh, sec you know, uh, other operations. Uh, what we are going to do, for example, the push of the non-response follow-up into the response, uh, that functionality we can test based on the no uh, dress rehearsal responses. We'll put up a mock environment that will send workload to be, uh, to be identified for non-response follow-up and we'll be able to test that in the operational control system that it will control non-response follow-up. Now, you, you heard Mr. Pounder say time is of the essence and you still have six major systems that still need to be tested. Um, are you cognizant that time is of the essence, that we are, we are closing in on a year to go? Mr. Chairman, we are very cognizant that uh, time is of the essence. We have an extremely tight schedule and it is going to be critically important that we stick to that schedule. Okay, thank you for that response. Mr. Driehaus, you may follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have one very br brief question uh, for Mr. Messenberg. Mr. Messenberg, uh, I, I'm particularly concerned about uh, the number of houses uh, that are currently in foreclosure uh, across the country and the transients we're seeing in, in our population. You know, the, the movements of population that we are seeing, especially in the inner cities, uh, that are traditionally difficult uh, to, under, to, to count, um, are, you know, we're, we're seeing folks move around at, at record levels. And, and I, I'm concerned as to whether or not the Census Bureau is, is taking the necessary steps uh, to account for that movement and how you are coping with that? It is, a, it is a growing problem. There's no doubt about that. The address canvassing operation that we will start at March 30th will visit every address, whether occupied or vacant. So the critical first step is to ensure that we have a complete address list uh, for the 2010 decennial census. So that's job one to make sure we have the, the list. Uh, Mid-March of next year, we will mail out report forms to every, almost every household in the, in the U.S. If that address is vacant, then they, they will not respond the form and they will go into the non-response follow-up operation. Uh, we will send an enumerator to that address to see if anyone is there. If they are there, we'll collect the data. We'll go back six times to make sure uh, that we can reach a person. Uh, if, if it's unoccupied, of course, we'll uh, miss them. Uh, we have taken some steps to address this issue. So we've added two questions to the 10 question 2010 census form that gets at coverage problems. Uh, one of those questions relates to do you have a relative living with you that you may not have listed on the report form. That will kick off an action to put that into, our, uh, into a follow-up activity that will try to identify uh, why that person wasn't listed. Uh, so that will be one way that we will uh, attempt to address uh, the issue of foreclosures and people moving into non-traditional uh, living arrangements. But I think a key message uh, that our partner, our, both of our advertising and our partnership program will be is to get out into the local community and to convince them through trusted voices in the community that if you are doubling up or if you're living in a non-traditional uh, living arrangement that it's important that you be counted and that you're listed on the report form. 
Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. McHenry, you're recognized for 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you all for testifying today. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. This is an important matter that we take very seriously, and I know you do as well. Um, Mr. Metzenbarg, thank you for your service. Um, I know it's only been brief, um, <laughs> your service in government, only 36 years, um, and we thank you for it. Uh, when the short timer, Mr. Jackson, sitting behind you, is only there for 20 years, um, we certainly know you have expertise um, and, and great knowledge based on experience, so thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Metzenbarg, um, it's my understanding that there's, there's plans to conduct a post-enumeration survey as part of the 2010 Census. Is this correct? We do have plans to do a coverage measurement program as part of the 2010 Census. Okay. Um, what is the sample size of this survey? The sample size is going to be about 300,000 housing units. Okay. Is this comparable to the 2000 Census? It is comparable to the 2000 Census. Is it the, the same number or is it just a, it, it's very close to the same number. Okay. Do you know do you recall what the 2000 number was? I don't off the top of my head, but certainly, certainly we can get you that certainly, number. Certainly. Um, and has a bureau um, in increased or changed uh, the post enumeration survey for this census? We've uh, we've made some changes to do a better job of trying to uh, identify duplicates in the census. That was an issue in 2000. Uh, the focus of the 2010 coverage measurement program is is to provide better information about the uh, components of air. So we'll be providing data not only on the net. Uh, the net error, but also uh, components of error, such as uh, duplicates, omissions, and so on. Has this been changed in the planning process, or is this a change from the 2000 Census? This was uh, uh, this has been the plan during the entire decade. Okay. Okay. Um, and how does the bureau intend to use the post enumeration survey? You outlined generally, but. We're using this primarily to provide measures of the air and as a input to improving the 2020 uh, decennial census. Okay. And is there any thought that the Bureau would use this uh, survey to adjust or, or uh, change the 2010 uh, count? Uh, the, there, the plan does not include any, uh, any plans to use the uh, coverage measurement for adjustment. Okay. Is there any other uh, thoughts to that or any other considerations to that? Not not in our current plan okay. there is it. Okay. Um, and yesterday, as I mentioned in my op opening statement, uh, it's been reported that Commerce Secretary-designee Gary Locke met with leaders of the Senate Commerce Committee and according to uh, the news report stated that, quote, so-called sampling will be used minimally as an accuracy check, end quote. Um, it, I, I believe he's referring to the post enumeration surveys. Is that how you'd read it? Well, the coverage measurement will provide estimates of the number of housing units and the number of persons. Uh, then you'll have the apportionment number also. But I, I'm not sure what uh, Governor Locke had in mind. And yeah, it's hard to impute from uh, politicians what they mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, so that would be somewhat in keeping with what you've outlined, just as a, a survey to check the accuracy. Okay. Um, now, in terms of a fair and accurate census, uh, what's your definition of a fair and accurate census? Well, we see job one is to count everyone. And uh, we see uh, an expanded advertising and partnership program as a key part of, uh, of doing that. We also uh, have done a number of additional things from an operational perspective that we hope will improve the count. Uh, this will be the first time we're using a short form only census, so 10 questions, 10 minutes to fill it out. Um, we also will be using a bilingual form, English, Spanish, that will target 13 million uh, households in primary areas where uh, 
English is not uh, often spoken at home. Mm -hmm. um, we will be using a second mailing, uh, a targeted second mailing, and doing a blanket mailing to traditionally low response, low mail response areas, and then sending a replacement form out to uh, uh, to another group uh, to the non-respondents. Um, and we hope and expect that a, that a much more robust partnership program will get the message out to the local mm -hmm. community that it's critical to participate in the census. So in short, do you believe that the Bureau's main goal for the 2010 census is to count every person once, only once, um, and at the right place? That's always been our goal. All right. And so that means a, a, a count, not an account of people. That means uh, an, an exact enumeration and counting. We will make every effort we can to get a response, uh, an actual response back from every household in the U.S. Uh, two of the greatest challenges. You've, you've mentioned this and, and I'm glad the Bureau has, has really thought through the undercount and overcount uh, numbers and, and uh, appreciate the fact that you, you have programs directly uh, focused on the undercount. Um, and, and would you describe the, the challenge of the undercount and the overcount as one of the most uh, challenging of the challenges the Bureau faces in the 2010 Census? Well, the, uh, I think it would be clear the uh, getting people to participate is the biggest challenge. So missing people is, uh, in my mind, a more significant challenge than uh, addressing the duplicates. We've done both things. We've added two coverage questions to the 2010 census. One's to help us get at undercount where someone incorrectly or mistakenly left a person off the report form that should have been on the report form. And we have added another question to help address the overcount where someone may have included, let's say, for example, a college student that should have been uh, counted at the uh, dorm where they, uh, they spend most of their time. Okay. So there are two questions there, and answers to those questions will generate uh, a telephone call as part of our coverage follow-up operation to try to uh, gather more information to uh, get the person counted in the right place. Well, um, you know, I, I think we all understand the sensitivities of uh, ensuring that uh, undercounted communities and uh, and people uh, are, uh, you know, focused upon and, and ensure that we actually uh, get them counted. Uh, which takes a lot of effort, uh, a lot of resources, and we want to be of assistance to that with you and the stakeholders in this. And with that, I'd like to yield the remainder of my time to uh, uh, the Deputy Ranking Member, Congressman Westmoreland from Georgia. Well, thank you, uh, Congressman McHenry. Uh, first, to uh, Mr. Goldenkoff and Mr. Browner. You know, I've been in quite a few of these oversight hearings, and I've seen uh, a lot of. Uh, reports from the GAO and I've never seen one that said y'all are doing a great job uh, you know so I, I know that y'all uh, do a very uh, good job but this comes pretty close when it says that there are no new recommendations now is that because you didn't go in and look at everything again or, or are you just going on a past report either one of you I think what you're referring to is our, our testimony today and the reason that there are no new recommendations is that all our recommendations are, okay. can you, okay. Maybe if you move it closer to you, Mr. Golden Girl. Okay, sorry. Um, I think what you're referring to is, is our testimony where we said that there were no new recommendations. That was just because um, our testimony was based on previously issued work, some of, most of which did contain recommendations. Okay, and so one in, of those Congressman Westmore, I just want to be clear. Okay. We're releasing a report today on system testing, so not to disappoint, we have 10 new recommendations today that we're releasing for the first time on testing. Okay. Okay. W one of the other um, things that uh, you had talked about was the uh, accurate, complete and accurate address list. Is that correct? That's correct. 
When do you think the best time would have been to get a complete and accurate address list? Uh, uh, the best, it, it's something that, that goes on throughout the decade. The Bureau is constantly working with the Postal Service through the Postal Service's deli delivery sequence file to update the address list. And now, as, as was already mentioned, um, or starting um, in April, the Bureau will go out and actually walk every street in the country um, to verify on the ground um, uh, house, housing units, um, uh, occupied housing units. And it, it's, it's a difficult task um, because uh, it's not always clear what meets the eye. You know, there could be several families living in there. And so you really have to go within six inches of a house sometimes to see double doorbells, two names on a mailbox that could indicate that there might be somebody living in the basement or in the shed in the back. So it is a very challenging task. I understand, but uh, the reality of it is, I guess, uh, the last address check is going to be the most accurate. And, and all the, the, you know, to me, at least the Census Bureau, from information and testimony I heard today from Mr. Mossenborg, is that uh, they have asked local cities and counties and others to do that, and they're trying to make sure that the information that they have before they do the mailing is also the most recent and most up-to-date and the most correct information. Would you agree with that? that? That is correct. You need to do it as close as possible to Census Day, but at the same time allow for the updating to take place so they can do the mail-out. So there, there needs to be a, a, some, some buffer in there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Westmoreland, uh, my friend from New York, Ms. Maloney, is recognized for five minutes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'd like to ask uh, the representatives from GAO uh, to respond to the earlier question on whether or not uh, the operational testing on payroll, personnel changes, et cetera, were up to the systems of 2000. Are they at the same level? Are, they, are you pleased uh, and agree with the prior answers to this question that operational testing was uh, correct in place and uh, happening to the degree that it should uh, to make sure that our systems uh, do not falter or fail? Yeah. The, no, I, I would disagree with that. that, that you know, one of the issues is that, that there was no de dress rehearsal. And the dress rehearsal, as the name implies, um, it's essentially a, a, a test census as, and under as close to census-like conditions as one could possibly get um, without actually conducting the census. And so because it was curtailed, the, the, the dress, what was done during the dress rehearsal was, was fairly limited, there were certain operations that just weren't tested. And so the Bureau is going into 2010 now with the actual conducting the actual census uh, in some respects um, flying blind that for example there was no load testing the number of you know there's millions of forms millions of pieces of paper need to be processed um, and the bureau never had an opportunity to test under in a lot of cases anything close to a load test of what would be a, a, a simulate a simulated census so well, it really fell quite well, short well, of that. What are the contingencies if these systems uh, falter or fail? What are the contingencies? In some cases, well, the, the Bureau, um, if it starts falling behind, um, mm -hmm. there, the Bureau has been good in, in the past um, with workarounds and patches. Um, it all depends on how bad the, the, the problem is. Um, you know, in some cases, the Bureau will fall behind schedule. Um, and that has implications for downstream operations. Um, in other cases, um, it might, things might cost more money. Um, but that is one of the, the, the issues, is that in some cases there is no backup or there is no contingency. It has to be done and done right. I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, follow up with a question on the budget. You really can't uh, move forward without a proper budget. And uh, do you have a full 10-year uh, cycle cost estimate for the decennial operations that you could give the committee today? Mr. Messon. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Our, our expectation is the life cycle cost is going to be between 14 and $15 billion for the decennial census. Mm -hmm. If I could, I'd like to just respond briefly on the payroll system. Uh, the decennial applicant payroll system is up and running. So this is the key tool that we use uh, to process applicants and then to pay them. So at this point in time, we have uh, over a million applicants in that system. We're actually only going to hire about 140,000 people for address canvassing 
but the, uh, the demand for jobs has been so huge that we have had over a million applicants. And right now we have got about 10,000 people in the, that are getting paid through this system. And uh, in another couple of weeks that will jump up by about 140,000. Um, how much money were you given in the stimulus plan? We were giving, uh, given $1 billion. $1 billion? $1 billion. And what are your plans for spending the additional money you were given in the stimulus plan? Um, the whole focus of this is a good, to do as good a job as we can improving uh, the count. And the, uh, the bill language uh, directed us to focus that money on enhanced and improved advertising and partnership activities, and that certainly is our intention. We also hope to invest additional uh, monies in our coverage follow-up operation, uh, adding about another million to the workload, and then the remainder of the funds would be, uh, would be there to support key 2010 activities. But in the short term, in terms of 2009, uh, uh, the expenditures will be primarily focused on expanded media buys and advertising and our partnership program. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the remaining money to make uh, other choices, what is your basis for making these choices? Do you have an analysis of what needs to be done or other areas that you need help and support to make a more accurate census? Uh, our criteria ha have been to focus on that ac those activities that will contribute uh, the most to the to the census. And actually, we've provided a plan to the Office of Management and Budget in terms of what our focus is, and we're awaiting their response at this point. Okay, thank you very much. And our time is my time has expanded as uh, is no thank longer. You. I've used up my time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, so you for much, all your hard Ms. work, Maloney, I now go to the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Chaffetz, for uh, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Messenberg, are you you're a career civil servant, correct? Yes, I am. Um, with more than adequate funding, do you believe the Bureau has the talent and capability to oversee a professionally implemented and successful 2010 Census? I do. Um, I would like your opinion as the Census Bureau professional on an important matter. You are currently operating without a presidentially appointed uh, Senate confirmed director, correct? That is true. Do you believe the Bureau has the talent and expertise to continue planning for and implementing a successful 2010 Census without a presidentially appointed Senate confirmed director? Well, I am doing two jobs at this point. <laughs> and I, and I, I guess I, what I see my job is right now is to continue to execute the plans to conduct a successful 2010 Census. I have no ambitions to be permanent director of the Census Bureau. Uh, but my job is to keep that train moving down the track so when we do get a Census Bureau director, we are in a better place than, than we were uh, you know, before. But do you believe that the uh, Bureau has the talent and expertise currently in, in place right now to execute? I, I believe we have the talent to keep the train moving down the track. I am not going to take a position whether we should uh, uh, have a director or not have a director. We have always had a director <laughs> and I, would, uh, I think a director would be useful for us. Um, as you know, the, uh, the results of the 2010 Census are used for apportionment and redistricting at all levels of government and the allocation of Federal funds. All of this is correct, right? That is true. So in your opinion, is it better to conduct a census that is free from political influence or do you think politicians should be telling you how to do your job? Well, the Census Bureau, uh, in my 36 years, we have always acted, uh, we have made decisions, technical decisions and program decisions on the technical merits of the issues. We have not made decisions based on uh, any kind of uh, political pressure. That has been my experience over 36 years. In the, uh, the census is based on the Constitution, correct? That's true. I don't. Do you recall which article or whatnot? Uh, That's embarrassing right. to article, say. Not <laughs> Article One of the Constitution deals with the powers of Congress, the legislative branch of our government, correct? True. 
So regarding anything having to do with the conduct of the census, it should be the Congress that has the authority and jurisdiction. Do you agree? Well, you're getting me into uh, territory I'm not a skill, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not an expert on. It's clear the Congress has a clear, uh, has a responsibility to oversee our operations. Yes, I would agree with that. How, um, how will the Bureau protect the integrity of the census from outright fraud? From, I'm sorry, outright. Just outright fraud. What, what, what protectors are in place to make sure that that doesn't happen? We have, uh, we have a whole series of uh, quality control operations that we have in place that, uh, that check uh, the operations. So, for example, when we start address canvas, well, I'll give you a, a better example. Right now, we are uh, about 90 percent done with the large block enumeration. And after that, we're all, now we have started to send uh, QC people, other enumerators out to check the quality of that work. And that is the test. Every operation that we do will have a QC uh, operation attached to it. And that is going to be, um, that will be one check. Another check in terms of housing unit counts and person counts will be our POP estimates program that makes most of those. That's another quality check that we have. So you have, if you have an enumerator, enumerator who fraudulently fills out data and then, and then submits these facts, do you believe there is a check and a balance in place? I to, do to believe deal that we have a, a check in place that will uh, identify that problem. Um, yeah. What is it to keep somebody who is, uh, gets in the form, the mail, it gets the form in the mail, and then knowingly fills it out incorrectly? I mean, grossly incorrectly. What? How do we deal with that? Well, there'll be some uh, there'll be some additional checks against some administrative record uh, information that we have access to, uh, but that's going to be very, very difficult to catch every every one of those if a person added. Uh, an extra individual uh, in the process. But we will, we will do some re-interviewing there. So if it is systematic on the part of a numerator, then we would catch it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Messenburg, let us um, go back to the operational control system. Uh, the OCS is the brains of the whole system of the field operations. When will end-to-end -end testing for the OCS be in place? Okay. Uh, the, the actual, the first testing will be done uh, April 20th through May 1st. Uh, so what we have done because of the timing pressures that we are under, we are going to address key operations on an incremental uh, process. So the actual final testing will, be not, will not be done on all of those interfaces until next March. Mr. Pounder or Mr. Golden Carver, is that uh, adequate as far as the, uh, the uh, response to, to, to ensure? Well, I, I think the key, it's, it's, a, it's a tough challenge for them because not everything's in place. So part of what they're dealing with is you want to test what you have now, but I think it's very important, as was stated, that you come back and retest. The key here, though, is there's a lot of the, there's a lot of this this these examples in place. We have six major systems. We heard 244 interfaces, 44 operations. Okay, so when you start looking at all that, getting it all done and testing it in an integrated fashion, end to end, as you're asking, Mr. Chairman, you see we don't see all the prioritization and the plans in place. So going forward, what's very important is that we see the appropriate plans, but then we have key metrics so we know exactly what's done, how well it's done, and then what remains ahead to complete. Uh, and, and the OCS is just one example of many challenges that they face going forward between now and Census Day. Okay. Uh, Mr. Golden Kopp, the, uh, the Bureau has many challenges facing its final preparation and con conduct of the uh, 2010 decennial census, uh, what do you think places the 2010 census at greater risk and uh, what can be done about it? I think the, the really two great, great risks. Um, one, time is running out. And two, um, the lack of testing of key operations. 
So as was already stated here today, the Bureau needs to prioritize um, what it can do, what it can't do, um, figure out where, you know, within all those uh, different operations and activities that haven't been tested, where the Bureau is most vulnerable. Um, and secondly, make sure everything stays on, on track. Um, a third area um, is perhaps more um, marketing and, and promotion because the non-response, uh, or the response rate rather, um, is, is key to success. You know, address canvassing uh, is set to begin nationwide within a few weeks. Um, the Bureau never was able to carry out an end-to-end -end test of the new handheld devices with all other procedures in the field. Uh, how prepared is the Bureau to conduct address canvassing and how can the Bureau be confident that everything will work as the Bureau hopes uh, without having tested it all? Well, I, I think that's, you know, the Bureau does, does not know what it doesn't know because, again, the lack of testing. They, they had the operational field test in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and what that demonstrated was that under the conditions in Fayetteville, North Carolina, the handhelds functioned uh, well. Uh, the, pro the problems that we had seen in earlier tests did not reemerge. Um, the problem is, is that obviously the country does not all look like Fayetteville, North Carolina. You have urban areas, you have more rural areas, and so the question is how will those handhelds perform, for example, in um, an area with lots of skyscrapers? Um, will they be able to lock on to a satellite signal? Will they be able to transmit data? Um, so, and that's what nobody really knows. It, it is a big question mark. Should, uh, should we be worried about the census being conducted on time? I think that it will, you know, it come April 1st, you know, forms will go out by law if they, they need to. Um, the question is really accuracy and, um, and quality uh, of, of the sense, accuracy and cost rather. That's really what it comes down to. Key operations, they will get done. They need to get done. It's just a question of how much will things cost and how good will the results be. Okay. The, at the end of the day, the data need to be delivered to the president come December 31st. Um, uh, 2010. 2010. Um, um, so whether they need to compress operations or um, speed things up at some point, um, that's they, they are under the gun. And so you know, things will happen on time. It's just a question of you know cost and accuracy. Sure. Thank you. Uh, when the census, Mr. Powder, when the Census Bureau provided comments on the GAO's report, it stated that it was putting much more focus on testing new things for 2010 and not testing things that have worked before. Uh, what is GAO's assessment of the Bureau's comment? Uh, we would not agree with that. It's important, uh, clearly it's important to test new things, but if you have old things that are critical and you change software and hardware associated with that, that needs to be tested. And that was really the focus of our report. It's really based on a prioritization. So the prioritization might be new things, but it could very well be older things also. Thank you for that response. And I, I will recognize the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Westmoreland, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just following up on uh, some of the comments that the gentleman from Utah had, uh, Mr. Mor Morsenberg, what quality controls are you going to have on these enumerators? We, uh, uh, gentleman from Utah, question about them filling out the forms wrong. But what kind of quality controls do you have on these enumerators? Okay, every every major operation we have um, we have a QC activity related to that. Uh, so we'll actually go take a sample of the enumerations, and we'll have a different person go back and attempt to collect that same data. And that provides us a, uh, uh, a, a clear signal in terms of the quality. Uh, if there are issues uh, related uh, to a specific interview, we call that operation a re-interview operation to identify problems. Uh, if we identify a problem, then we will zero in on that uh, enumerator and then do a 100 percent check of all of their work. But every operation we do, we're going to have a QC step built into it to check the quality of it. Okay. And let's say that you do correctly identify an enumerator. What kind of corrective actions would be 
could be taken? Uh, they could be terminated, uh, and certainly they would be out of the enumerating uh, business at, uh, as soon as we identified that. Okay. Uh, I know that the Bureau, as you have mentioned, uh, will automatically mail a second census form to these uh, traditionally, I guess, hard to count areas or the no response. Uh, that's correct, right. You will do a second mailing. Yeah, second mailing, a uh, blanket second mailing to areas that have that have a traditional very low mail response. We'll do a blanket mailing and then we'll have another group that's uh, sort of intermediary, possibly under 50 percent. Then we will mail the non-respondents, the, the households that hadn't returned a form, will get a form there. Okay. So you feel comfortable that you're going to hit these under response areas very well. Uh, with a second mailing? We, we've tested the second mailing during the decade. Uh, we used it during the dress rehearsal. Uh, we're confident that it will be beneficial. So you believe the second mailing is going to enhance your response? Yes. How will you ensure that the data capture isn't wrongfully counted twice for those that return forms from both mailings? Now, what, what's your system in place there to check that? Okay. In terms of data, uh, data capture, forms will come, uh, will be returned and go through one of our automated uh, three data capture systems. They actually do OCR on the forms. Then we will do uh, a matching operation. Every form will have a unique 22-digit identifi identifier on that. If we can't match, that generates a whole host of additional uh, investigative work. Okay, so, so we have an automated process to make sure that we are not getting duplicate returns in. Thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. Goldenkopf, uh, do you believe that uh, because of all the stuff that we've been hearing in the news about we need a director, we don't have a director or whatever, you and Mr. Uh, Prowler, do you believe that the uh, Bureau has the right talent in-house to oversee this 2010 census? The Bureau employees, they are extremely dedicated, extremely competent, um, and they have lots of experience. Um, the concern is, is that here it's getting, you know, with 10 yards to go until the goal line, census day, um, there's no permanent quarterback in place. And the other issue to consider as well, you know, not only who's calling the shots, who's being held accountable by Congress um, to the American taxpayers. Um, this is also the time when the Bureau starts planning for the next census, the 2020 census. And so you need somebody in place who uh, will take on, who will be responsible and held accountable for that as well in making those sorts of, of decisions. So clearly the competency is, is there. There's, there's no question about that. We've seen it in past decennials. But we need someone who is a strategic leader um, and someone who is, you know, goes through the conventional selection process. Okay. Um, given that this short form, and it's only a short form for the census, um, do you think that better equips the Bureau to conduct this census than in previous M most Senate. definitely. It, it, it should improve the response rate because it's less burdensome than having a, a short form and a long form. I mean, the back in 2000 um, studies have shown that the response rate to the short form was higher than to the long form. So, you know, you're more willing to spend 10 minutes than 40 minutes on, on the right. long form. So it makes it a little important. easier for them to fill it out. That is correct. And, and probably not as uh, deep a questions or personal questions as it was. But is my time up, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Westmore. I recognize the gentleman from Utah for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. Pounder, do you believe that there is uh, enough talent to uh, oversee and conduct the 2000 Census? From a technology point of view, and for 2020, the Census Bureau needs more IT talent on board, clearly. Uh, if you look at what happened last summer with FIT, the FITCA problems, uh, fortunately we have organizations like MITRE. They hired some external folks to come in and help at executive levels. Uh, going forward, there are folks that are trying to do a good job there right now, but going forward we need more IT talent internal to the Bureau. To, uh, like previous uh, 
uh, decennials, the, the Bureau is using paper and pencil for non-response follow-up. But unlike previous years, we have better maps for enumerators, a targeted second mailing of the census form to the hard to count areas, and likely a better applicant pool from which to hire these enumerators. Shouldn't all these factors lead to more accurate census? Uh, yes, they, they, they should um, lead, lead to a more ac accurate census. Um, it's, you, you can handle the non-response follow-up workload faster, which, which is important because it reduces recall error. So all those things you mentioned should uh, lead to that direction. And if you could just summarize for me again real quickly, the major hurdles that you see and if any of these hurdles, uh, you know, what the cons consequences would be if we aren't able to overcome those hurdles? Well, first, um, time is running out. There's just no time for, for missteps. There's no slack in the schedule. So to the extent that challenges or or glitches emerge and those things are inevitable, something comes up in testing, there's not a whole lot of time left to figure uh, what, what the workaround is. Um, secondly, um, the population is complex, demographically complex, um, and so as we said in, in, in my statement that a key challenge is converting that awareness of the census into an actual response. Bureau has been very good in terms of getting the word out. People, 90% of the population or so, is typically aware of the census, but the re actual response rate is, is much lower. So that would be another hurdle. Would you concur or disagree that the, uh, the census is rooted in Article I of the Constitution, which enumerates the powers of the legislative branch? Oh, um, I will pass on, on that <laughs> one. I, will. I guess the, the, the question is, uh, who, who do you believe the census director reports to? Well, legally, um, to the Commerce Secretary, and that I believe is in, in statute. And is it uh, your experience from past decennials that the director often briefed the president but never, quote unquote, reported to him? Well, I mean, for what we've seen in news accounts and also from some experience during the Bush administration, um, there was some contact between um, the Census Director um, and, and the White House, OMB. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, we've reported here today the census. But communication is a little different than actually reporting right, to. Right, and they're, they're two different things. It's one thing for the White House to um, be aware of and, and make sure that the census stays on track, but it's, that is not a reporting relationship. Um, but in terms of um, holding the Bureau accountable, it's a very powerful tool um, to have White House involvement. The thing is that the, the White House, it has to be that right balance between focusing on management and operational issues versus the science of the census. You don't want the White House or any political influence um, on the science of, of taking the census. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just one, one question for, for Dr. Himes. Um, you know, the, the Bureau is working with MITRE on uh, mitigation plans. Um, what are your greatest concerns about um, timetables and the plans? So I think, again, our, our, uh, our greatest concern would be uh, those that GAO has, has put together, that um, the time to test and verify uh, where the systems are working, uh, particularly from a, uh, a system view. So we think that. Um, uh, there are tools in place that give census better insights into uh, the status of their systems than they've had in the past. And um, the people that are working on them have uh, uh, substantial experience. Uh, but it's still a fairly large burden considering the amount of time uh, remaining to track that whole activity end to end. Thank you so much for that response, Dr. Ham. I'll yield uh, to Mr. Westmoreland. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. I just I didn't have any other questions, but uh, when Mr. Goldenkoff passed on the uh, Article One of the Constitution question, I felt like we might want to discuss that a little bit further. Uh, that the GAO understands uh, that uh, we feel like the census. The origin of the census is rooted. Oh, that no question. Article yeah, one, in, section in, in two. Article, Maybe I misunderstood you know, the, in the Article question. one of the Constitution, then, which enumerates the power of the legislative branch. And so, yes. you know, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that, and you were just passing on the question, maybe for 
No, it, I guess I, I misunderstood yeah. the question. I, I, I apologize, oh, okay. but definitely yeah. it's Article One, Section Two, and that spells out the basic uh, requirements and, and, of the census. And you know, I think, uh, and Mr. Chairman, I would like to just make a, just a comment, if I could, that we all understand how important this census is uh, for redistricting, for the um, uh, allocation of federal money. And uh, I'm very pleased with the testimony that we've heard today because I think that uh, everybody on that panel wants to have an accurate count, an enumeration of everybody in this country, people who were here at the time of the census. And so I think that's the reason that, you know, there's been so much uh, uh, about, you know, whether the White House wants to have it reported to or the a Commerce Secretary, uh, there is or is not a director. I feel very confident from just the information I've heard from uh, the Census Bureau and, and the acting director there and from the GAO and the things that they've looked at that this process is going forward about as well as it could and that there's been a lot of hard work uh, put into it. And so I think that the reason there's so much going on right now is everybody wants to make sure that every person is counted. And so um, I appreciate all of you coming. I want to thank the chairman for having this hearing because I think he recognizes the importance to each and every one of us and the fact that we get a very accurate count. And so with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd yield back to balance my time. Thank you, Mr. Westmoreland. And, uh, you know, in, in conclusion, let me thank the witnesses for their testimony today. If I could ask just one. Oh, you question. have another question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll yield <laughs> to Mr. McKinley. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to get this on the record, uh, Mr. Metzberg, <clears throat> from the Census Bureau's perspective, and I, I'm sure you'd, you, these are questions you'd like to answer. Uh, any and all the information obtained from the census forms cannot be used uh, for any other purpose, including tax or law enforcement purposes. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Many of us have received feedback from our constituents regarding privacy concerns. Obviously very, very, uh, very much in, in mind today especially. But information given by people to the Census Bureau is confidential by law. Is that correct? By law, by Title 13. All right. Um, and the main challenge is, uh, well, Getting people to respond is one of the main challenges, yeah, as you mentioned. So um, is there, because people maybe have a mistrust of government, um, what efforts are you taking to ensure that, uh, that people know that any information given to them, uh, giving, given to them is uh, kept only within the Census Bureau and not shared with any other government agency, department, or any other, any other individual? Well, that, that information will, will be on the report form that everybody receives, but probably more importantly, it's going to be a key focus of our advertising message and our partnership program. So it's one thing for the Census Bureau to tell people it's confidential. In the uh, hard-to-reach segments of the population, our partnership program is aim to get a trusted voice in that community to tell people that live in that community. And our partnership specialists will be hired from the community that they're working in, that you, you can trust uh, the Census Bureau uh, that they'll hold your data confidential. Certainly. And finally, if um, uh, you and your staff could uh, prepare a follow-up for this. This is a too long of a question. Our time is short. Um, I'd like to know the Census Bureau's full plan to minimize the undercounts and overcount. Uh, and I know you already have plans in place, but if we could uh, receive that, I think that would be important for committee members to hear the, the full breadth and depth of your plan. And so we can also uh, see ways that we can engage other stakeholders. And certainly. And thank you all. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very I certainly good. appreciate Very it. Very good. Thank you. And uh, the the first major um, operation of the 2010 census uh, address canvassing begins on March 30th. Uh, there will not be any other opportunities to build a complete and accurate address list. Uh, time is of the essence. Uh, it is critical that the Bureau work with GAO, uh, MITRE, and use every resource available uh, to get this right.
Uh, six major systems still need to be tested. The life cycle cost estimate needs to be validated uh, and, and testing must be prioritized. Uh, let me thank all of the witnesses for coming today uh, and, and thank the members of this committee for their singular focus uh, and, and their commitment to seeing uh, that the 2010 census uh, be successful. And on that note, uh, this hearing is adjourned.